Hey everybody, I'm Jason Creel and this is the Lawn Care Life. Well, I had a milestone for my business this year. In my fifth year of business, I hit 500 customers and somewhere in the neighborhood of 520 now. I don't have an exact count. But I wanted to talk to you about three things that I learned from reaching 500 customers. I'll talk to you a little bit about my approach to growing business and getting to 500 customers, but then things that getting there has taught me and what I've learned. So let's get started. So a little bit of my story, if you haven't followed me in the past, I've uh, this is actually my third lawn business. I started a lawn business and I sold it after a while. And then I had a portion of that remaining and then we decided to move to a new area. So I sold what was remaining of that and then started my third lawn business and I'm in my fifth year. Well, I'm mostly doing weed control and fertilization nowadays. A lot of times that's the question I get when, or a comment somebody will, will leave on a YouTube video if I say I've got 500 customers they're like how in the world are you cutting 500 yards you know well i'm doing weed control fertilization which is uh, much different as far as the amount of customers that you have to have to to make it. i mean you can handle 400 by yourself really no problem to be honest with you so, so how do you get to 500 customers and that's no world record by any means i mean that's really you know 100 customers a year i get maybe a little more than that sometimes but uh, I'm sure there's business out there that get 500 a year is just normal for them. So this is not about like some unbelievable achievement. But I, what I found is on YouTube, if I share what my experiences in the line business and what I've done and, and how I've responded in my business, a lot of people can relate to that and it helps them think through their own business. So that's all I'm doing is sharing uh, my experience. So, you know, when I start a business, uh, and, and having done it three times, I had a little bit of advantage. Um, you have to sort of do whatever you have to do to get customers initially. It's the biggest challenge for new lawn businesses usually is getting customers. But after a while, it, it becomes much easier. And that's, uh, for me, what I do now is, is two main things as far as building my business. One is a strong internet presence. I've talked about this before, but just having a website that ranks well on the search engines. Uh, there's other things involved with having a strong internet presence like a Facebook page, like Instagram, being on YouTube, you know, things like that all help going into my local business, being successful and being able to gain customers. And the other area where I really think is, is key, especially in a community is that you build key relationships with people who can send you customers. So I want to get to know the people out there that are mowing grass because they send me a lot of referrals and vice versa. If I was mowing grass, I'd want to get to know the people doing weed control and fertilization because they can send you a lot of referrals. And I do send a lot of referrals uh, to people for that. But like I said, when you're initially starting, it may be more, you know, doing everything. There's, there's, you do Google ads, Facebook ads, Craigslist, door hangers, postcards, direct mail. I mean, you're doing a lot of things that are not as effective, in my opinion, as, as your web presence and getting those relationships. The problem is those relationships and web presence, sometimes that takes a long time to develop. Uh, but I think you need to be starting with that, even if you're just starting out in the business, and you may have to go for some of those other ways to get customers just to get you an initial customer base because like i said you're not going to get referrals when you're brand new who's going to refer you they don't know you don't have any existing customers to refer you so it takes a while to get an existing customer base and then you start getting those referrals but let's talk about the three things that i have learned or at least three things as my business has grown to 500 customers well i think one and i'm not counting this as one of three but what i just said about how to grow a business how to get customers just the importance nowadays of having a good strong online presence but but the three things that came to my mind was uh, in no particular order number one was getting to 500 customers or in that range has forced me to think about where do i want my business to go from here go grow whatever you know where where's it headed and i had to make a decision um, not that i can't change my mind later but am i going to try to be you know humongous and have tons of, of trucks and thousands of customers or do i want to kind of stay local and, and maybe get to i don't know 1500 2000 customers and, and sort of max out my local area and stay like that you know versus of trying to get as many customers as possible maybe you know 10,000 whatever i don't know um well for me and that, that might also have some determination on what area you're going to work in so for instance I, i'm 30 minutes outside of of the big city that has a million people or so in it and so 
I could uh, go to that area and try to get as many customers as possible. I've sort of made the decision not to do that. Um, I wanted to stay more in the suburbs and uh, local in my area and not try to be the hugest business ever, but uh, just continue to maximize the profitable areas where I'm already established in, closer to my base, and continue building up my route density, and like I said, maybe get to 1,500, 2,000 customers one day, but uh, it, it, what it's led me to do is, when I get that phone call that's 30, 40 minutes away, um, I don't always take on that customer now. I'm just focusing on continuing to uh, become more route dense in my local area. And I, and I didn't know that that was what I was gonna do, but as I've grown and I've just said, you know what, I think, I think that's what I wanna do. I don't want 10 trucks on the road. I might take three or four one day, but 10 sounds like a lot to me at this point. And I think everybody's gonna have to make that decision. You know, what do you want your business to look like five, 10 years from now? And picture that and start working toward that. The second thing I learned was, how do you feel the labor need? When it gets bigger than you can handle yourself, what do you do about that? Well, there's a lot of options, uh, not, not a whole lot, but you can hire somebody full-time, you can hire part-time people, you can do subcontractors. I mean, there, there's different ways to approach it. But what I did, I was kind of caught in this area. Like I said, I could probably do 400 yards by myself, weed control fertilization. But I got in this situation where I had more customers than I could do, but not really enough to justify hiring somebody full-time. Now, you can either hire somebody full time and when you don't really need it and, and, and you're going to take a financial hit in the short term, but if you get that person trained and they're doing a great job, it gives you plenty of room to grow because now you have a full time person and you have more manpower than you really need so you can take on more customers. Well, I kind of went the other option. I, I said, let me try to piece together part time people and I'll continue working full time and what that does is maximize my profits now. Okay, now it doesn't set me up to future growth. Eventually I'm gonna have to make another jump and get somebody full-time and then maybe two full-time people, you know, but in the meantime, I, I'm, I'm working with part-time people to piece it together to try to minimize expenses on labor and continue to maximize profits in the short term so that it forced me to make that decision i think everybody once you get past what you can do yourself you have to say well what am i going to do am i going to just not take on any more customers some people do that uh, some people say i'll take on better customers and weed out my bad customers that's one option uh, they say i'll hire part-time people i'll sub stuff out or i'll hire people and we'll just keep growing 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 so everybody needs to kind of make that decision once you get more work than you can handle yourself and then the third thing I wanted to mention in this video of what it caused me to do was to help develop some systems. Now my system still needs some development, I'll just be honest with you, but there was something that hit me this year, probably the first year, because I don't think I have some kind of unbelievable photographic memory, but I, you know, I have pretty good memory and I, if I had 300 yards, I could almost picture every yard in my head. I mean, even know the, you know, what kind of weeds this yard struggles with and, uh, you know, but as I've got the 500, something in a way that's intimidating and in some ways refreshing has happened. I'll get a payment, whether from a check or on, on a credit card, and it'll have a name on there. And I'll look at the name and I can't, for the life of me, picture that person's yard, or where they live, or anything. And I've had to rely on systems. You know, I use Yardbook to manage my business. And so I can obviously go in there and look at where they lived and what treatments we've done on their lawn, that sort of thing. But it's not all in my head anymore. Okay, I can't rely on just all mental notes. And that's a good thing. And I think you should start that from the beginning to develop systems of how am I going to keep orderly track of my business, invoicing, scheduling, routing, things like that so that I can become efficient from the beginning. Now, like I said, you get to a point where you, you can't remember that, oh, I do Miss Smith's yard every Tuesday and she's got the little dog and I need to call her before I come. And that, you know, you can keep that stuff in your head when you got 20 customers. But after a while, you need to, you know, I wouldn't say write on a piece of paper. It needs to be in some sort of software, some system that you can become efficient and keep track of what you've done and, and help you know how to manage your business best. And like I said, it's forced me to do that because I just, my mental capacity has been reached and I can't remember everything. 
anymore. These are some things I've learned as I've reached 500 customers. I want to give you one uh, more reminder. I am uh, part of the group that has received an affiliate link for the GIE Expo. I've already booked my hotel room. I encourage people to do that early if you're going to the, the GIE Expo in 2019 at the time of this video. Um, but they've given uh, some of us an affiliate link, meaning that if you use my link, I get a commission, but what you don't, you actually get a half price ticket. So it's a way for you to support the channel if you wanna do that and get your tickets half price. So it's only $15 for early bird. You use my link, it's $7.50. I'll put that link in the description of this video. Hope to see many of you there. Thanks for watching the video. Let me hear from you in the comments. Subscribe if you want to keep up with the channel. And I look forward to talking to you all later. Thanks a lot. Bye.